All right, so what's up, everyone? Now, welcome back to the channel. Now, as we get closer to Modern Warfare 2, I wanted to make a full review on Call of Duty Vanguard, so I could just be done with this game and move on, if I'm being honest. Now, this is, I reckon, the least popular Call of Duty game we have ever had in the history of the franchise. I think this is even worse than Infinite Warfare, World War 2, or any other Call of Duty games you might think of. And I think this is apparent in the fact that even the official COD social accounts only talk about Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 these days. You can tell that they've literally forgotten about Vanguard's existence, kind of like most people in the gaming community. Now, I just wanted to preface this before getting into the full review that I don't think Vanguard, at least in terms of the multiplayer, area, is a bad game, and I think that it is definitely overhated. However, there are a lot of things in this game that do deserve the hate it gets, but I do think that people can be a bit too harsh on this game at times, especially when we look at what came before it. So just before we begin with today's video, if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Modern Warfare 2 is just around the corner, and I'm going to be doing a full campaign series when the early access starts, and when the full launch comes out, I'm going to be doing all sorts of videos, you know, easy gold gun guides, tips and tricks, funny moments, you name it, I'm probably going to make a video on it. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But without the way, let's get straight into the zombies. Yes, we are starting with the zombies because I reckon this will definitely be the quickest section. This year's version of zombies is without a doubt the single worst iteration of the mode in the 11 or something years we've been getting COD zombies. I mean, it's surprising that Sledgehammer actually managed to make a mode even worse than their World War II version. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. This was made by Treyarch? What the fuck? I mean, this level of incompetence would be expected from Sledgehammer, to be honest, but the fact that Treyarch went from Cold War Zombies, which is definitely not like OG Zombies, but it was a solid addition to the franchise, to this is nothing short of a fucking joke. What Treyarch have excreted to the COD community this year was not only a letdown to Zombies fans, but it was actually an insult. I don't think they could actually go lower than this. I don't even know if I can trust Treyarch to make zombies anymore after this year. Now, to be honest, it's not as bad as the launch. It's definitely better these days. But at the launch of the game, it was a fucking disgrace to load up the game and see Duran Fong is the only map. And it wasn't even a round-based map. It was some weird outbreak thing from Cold War. I don't even know what they were going for. And on top of that, there was no pause feature. There was no Easter egg, no pack punch cameras and wonder weapons and so much more missing from this game that was just the core identity of zombies and things that were just staples of the game mode it genuinely made me want to commit suicide. Now, to be fair, in Treyarch's defense, they have definitely been overworked and under time constraints since before Black Ops 4 came out, so a good four years by now. And the fact they have an extra year this year, because Modern Warfare 2 is obviously getting two years of support, I'm hoping they can return to their former glory. However, that only really excuses things like bugs and missing features and things like that, but when it comes down to this game's core design, they really dropped the ball here, and they have to take full responsibility for their fuck ups like i said it's definitely a lot better these days there's sheena numa which is actually the only round based map in this game it's something i guess everything i listed before has been added but this is too late in the game's life cycle to fix the wrongdoings of the past no one cares about this game and if you want a zombies experience better than this one it is even if it's a current state i think world war 2 would better suffice in this absolute snooze fest of a game mode how do you make Excuse me, who hired this bitch? I think the clip that I just played really sums up why the campaign failed this game. I don't even know if they're actually trying to give COD its first iconic characters, or if they're trying to make an iconic team, sort of like an Avengers star thing for Call of Duty, but whatever they're going for, they fucking failed. I mean, if we just want to talk about some iconic characters from Call of Duty, we've got Captain Price, Soap, Mason, Woods, Reznov, Bowman, Ghost, Makarov, Menendez, Gaz, if you want to go even further than that, Ramirez, Rourke, Ruin, Seraph, Kevin Spacey, Harper, even fucking Player. This list could literally go on if you really want to be an arsehole about it, but I think I made my point. Call of Duty campaigns are really, really special to me. Um, these are the kinds of things in these games that you don't spend much time on at all. Of the three game modes, 
in a Call of Duty. This one is by far played the least uh, by most people, I reckon. This game mode is where the least amount of playtime goes into. However, I think some of the most iconic moments from Call of Duty's history and really Call of Duty's identity comes from the campaign. Things like, you know, the time setting, the characters, you know, just the story being told. I think back to games like Black Ops 1 and that game's campaign. Yeah, you know, you've got the Modern Warfare trilogy. I think back to those and they're just so iconic. The, the story's being told, the characters. It's like playing a film. Like, it genuinely is that higher quality. And if I'm being honest, we've been getting quality campaigns for a good amount of time. I mean, we've had the odd ones like, say, Call of Duty Ghosts, um, World War II that were not very good. And obviously, we deem get a campaign with Black Ops 4. And the past two years have been phenomenal for campaigns. I mean, Modern Warfare 2019 has, is probably my favourite one. It's on. It's been on the shorter side, to be fair. But that is probably one of the best campaigns, if not the best campaign to come out. Black Ops Cold War as well, I think, was actually an amazing campaign. But you just think back to these older campaigns and even the ones we just got like a year ago. They have such iconic characters, and the the characters of really what bring this these games, you know, the heart and the, the I guess the character of the stories. And I just think to this campaign, and the two standout characters to me are Kingsley because he's our leader. He's you know he's he's the good guy, you know, the main guy rather. He's a funny English man. I can relate to an English bloke, I guess. And there's also Lucas, who is the Australian. He had a lot of funny lines. He was really the heart of the group. You know, he was the um, the one you'd sort of laugh with the most. And he was, I think, the best character out of the group. And I'm just going to say now to the rest of them, I don't hate the actors. You know, the actors aren't really the problem. Although sometimes they can be. I'm looking at Polina. But if I'm being honest, the rest of the characters are just generic stereotype characters I don't really care about. I mean, Polina, I think, is is the biggest example of that like the whole lady death you know female sniper thing was such a cool concept but her dialogue in this campaign is actually rancid it's like rise of skywalker levels rancid now in this campaign the main story and the plot was actually not the main concern um, there's actually secondary to the main characters backstories about 60 to 75 percent of this game's playtime is spent in flashbacks telling us about the characters while the main story consists of our characters infiltrating the base getting captured, waiting in a cell, escaping, and then killing the big bad guy who's another generic German. Ooh. The main story is boring as hell, and I think, to be honest, the devs knew that, so they put in the background to some actual cool stories and missions. It is nice seeing the backgrounds of these characters, but the main plot suffers for it, and realistically, there's no point in getting to learn these characters for so long and finally seeing them team up when we most likely won't even ever see them again, so what's the point? But I guess it provides worth is not bad. It's worth watching or playing through at least once, but it's not anything to, you know, it's not anything amazing. But the one thing I can compare this campaign on, or even just the game as a whole, actually, uh, it's the soundtrack. The soundtrack to this game is absolutely phenomenal. You can tell this is where most of the effort actually went. And to be honest, that's the same across every Call of Duty game. Every Call of Duty game has a banging soundtrack, whether it's a shit game or not. Even World War II, Infinite Warfare have amazing soundtracks. I mean, just listen to this piece from the Vanguard soundtrack. That gets me hyped, and I don't even enjoy the game, do you know what I mean? Like, that is actually just insane to me, how music can do that. Just pure music. I don't get feels for the game, right? It's just the soundtrack, and it, oh, it, it's brilliant.
Now, the final part of this video, and most likely the longest one, is the multiplayer. This is obviously where people are going to spend the most amount of time in the COD games, and this is where I spend most of my time in this game, so that's where most of my review is going to be going as well. So, let's start off with probably the most important part of any multiplayer, to be honest. That's the maps. Now, the general map design in this game is actually pretty decent. I look at maps like uh, Eagle's Nest and Oasis, although that one's probably not the best example actually but even just that general design philosophy even though it's not one of the best maps the design philosophy is a lot better compared to Malfa 2019 um the, the maps were pretty decent but they're not anything amazing once again i think the main problem is the locations for these maps they're all very sort of boring they're like fields with destroyed buildings and uh, eagle's nest once again that's one of my favorite map from this game that is i think it's like some some like hitler base or whatever on like a mountain it's a cool location. It has history behind it, which I think is very really interesting. Although the design, like I said, was good for balance, um, most of the gameplay was pretty good. Um, it's nothing too exciting. Once again, it's nothing to you know get hyped about. Like, oh, it's this map. It's just sort of like, oh, yeah, it's this map, I guess. So that's pretty cool. Spawn logic in this game is fucking abysmal as well. I mean, this is actually probably the worst spawn logic we've ever had. And... I'd even, I don't know if this game uses the same squad spawning system as Modern Warfare, but whatever system it uses, just bin it, just get rid of it. It's genuinely the worst spawn logic we've ever had. I don't get how spawn logic keeps going downhill. Ever since Modern Warfare 2019, it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. And to be honest, it seems like Modern Warfare 2 is not getting much better, so... Got that to look forward to. The weapons in this game and the gunsmith, um, probably the worst we've had in the franchise, to be honest. Ten attachments, as I predicted, I think as everyone predicted, was fucking terrible. Um, I said this from like the beta. You know, you've got too much to think about. You've got to think about ten individual attachments, how they all affect each other, how they all affect the gun, what build you want to go for. Five is the absolute maximum, in my opinion, and you know, even more than that, it's just once again, it, it's just too much to think about. And I can only think about the, the balancing issues that this, this game had. I mean, to be honest, I was mentally checked out of this game for the pretty much the entire year. But I can only think of the weapon balancing issues. Like, you've got this one OP gun. They change one attachment, but then it's, they just use another attachment and it's OP. And if you change up the combination of attachment, it's just fucking dumb. For the third year in a row, I hate how many assault rifles and SMGs we keep getting. Yeah, full auto assault rifles and SMGs just seem to be the main thing they keep adding to these games. And it's just so boring. I don't think we got a single LMG in this game or, or shotgun or something like that. One of those like main category weapons. Weapons, we didn't get a single one of them the whole year like how do you go an entire year of cod without doing a single one of those weapons that's just outrageous to me and all the weapons just sort of feel shit there's no weight to them they're, they're all performing pretty much the exact same lmgs feel like ars smgs feel like ars you know there's just everything's just sort of the same snipers are slow and weak like what's the point man everything's just the fucking same it's just blended into one it's just boring time to kill feels pretty good i think it is a bit longer than mole fair 2019 which is good but it doesn't feel as long as cold war so I think that helps the pace quite a lot because you don't have to camp like Mole for 2019's times kill. But with Cold War, you can sort of get through the engagements quicker, I guess, with this current one. Whereas with Cold War, it feels like you're shooting someone for like an entire minute. Whereas with this game, you can just sort of get you know get into a gunfight, win, move on, sort of thing. If, if that makes sense. I think times kill is actually a massive factor on the pacing of a game. Um, I think if the times kill is too quick then people are going to camp because obviously if you run around the corner then you and you just die why would you run why would you do that you can just sit in the corner and you know just get kills pick people off really easy but at the same time if you have something too long like say black ops 4 or you know warzone i guess then it sort of gets to a point where you just you're spending too long in the engagements you don't get in as many you're spending too much time in them i know i used warzone as a comparison there that's obviously the point of that mode it's, it's a slower game but i'm not complaining about warzone's time to kill movement the engine and the graphics are all pretty much copied over from Marvel 2019 apparently it's a slight upgrade but Honestly, it just feels like a downgrade. I don't know how it, they upgraded it. It just feels worse. It, it's better than Cold War, in my opinion, but it's just, it still feels worse than Malfa 2019, which, once again, is ironic. They said it was an upgrade, but whatever. But yeah, everything in this department is pretty much ported over Malfa 2019. Um, I said this from the beginning as well. This game is literally Malfa 2019 with World War II skin on. 
it's not a bad thing, but it is also a bad thing at the same time. I don't really know how I, how I feel about that still, but that's what it is. The graphics in this game are very good. Um, when you stand still and look at the scenery or just look at the map itself, the graphics do look really good. But when you're actually in the game, I don't know how to describe it. It's like the game is like blurry. I don't really know how to describe it. It feels like sort of low quality, I guess. I don't know how to describe it. Maybe it's just me, but... It just sort of feels like aesthetically, it's just sort of not as crisp as, like, say, Marvel Fair 2. That game looks phenomenal. Um, but Marvel Fair 2019, even, like, it just it doesn't feel as crisp as those games. It feels like it has this like, weird blur effect. And the movement was really quick in this game. Uh, the, the pacing of this game was actually just insane. I think this might be the quickest boots on the ground pacing we've ever had. And that was definitely apparent in the Blitz game modes. I only played that because. My entire playtime of Vanguard, I've been going for camos, so obviously I'm going to be in the Blitz playlist. And yeah, it, it definitely is a Blitz pacing. It's ridiculous. I never really played Tactical, to be honest, and maybe that's my own fault. Um, but when I'm going for camos, you know, can you blame me? The Creator class this year is the exact same as Marvel 2019, apart from the Gunsmith, which obviously we've already talked about. Um, I don't really have much else to say. I like this version of the creator class. Um, there's obviously this or the pick 10 system, the, the main two contentions. And a lot of people do argue for pick 10. I do see the arguments. However, I just prefer to, to have what I want. Like I like having five attachments on both my primaries, a lethal tactical free perks. I think that's just better. I don't like the pick 10 system because it literally just limits you, you know, to what you want to use. And I do get that people say that, like, you know, grenade spam is a lot worse with um, this kind of system. But to be honest, that's just a Vanguard thing, if I'm being honest. I never really had that issue with any other game. I think that is literally just a problem with Vanguard. I think that's probably due to the Blitz pacing, if I'm being honest. There's just so many more people, so many more kills and deaths, you know, you're respawning more. You know, when you have a pick 10 system, I like to have, like, you know, primary like two to three attachments and a few perks maybe a lethal or a tactical i don't get to use a secondary weapon i don't get to use a lethal or a tactical whatever and i don't get to use as many perks as i would like to so i just think the system is inferior i get it has trade-offs like you know you have to think about it a bit more but i think it's just unnecessary i think it's an unnecessary addition it's just locking things away for the sake of it and then saying you know, you have to think about it. I just think it's dumb. In terms of the streaks in this game, um, it was score streaks, so it was a bit better than normal kill streaks. Uh, a couple of the kill streaks were fun. Um, you know, you have the ball turret, you have the flame nor. Those two are probably my favourites from this game. But everything else is just sort of generic. It doesn't really feel interesting apart from those two. Um, it's just a lot of the things that we've seen before, like you know, bombing runs, cruise missiles, UAV, whatever. It's just all is there, I guess. It's all right. SBMM is still an issue. This is going to be now the fourth year in a row where we've been complaining about SBMM. Um, obviously, it's not actually skill-based matchmaking. It's like performance-based matchmaking. It's a very malicious system, and I hate it. It needs to go um, you know, to what it was before and have a ranked system with this kind of thing in play or an MMR system or something. Blitz pacing definitely helps with this, to be honest. You don't really feel that people are sweating when it's just sort of like people are spawning inside each other's assholes. But I don't know. I just, I feel like they still need to change this. You know, you can't just slap more people on the map and say, yeah, we fixed skill based matchmaking. That's not how it works. Realistically, you need to actually tackle this issue when a larger you know, portion of the community don't like it. And there are arguments for and against skill-based matchmaking, and I could go down that rabbit hole, but we're not here to talk about that. I don't like it. That's just the way it is. Sledgehammer definitely gave up really quickly with this year um, in terms of adding content, you know, communication, that kind of stuff. They were pretty much doing the bare minimum as soon as like you know, the first second month was up. Uh, they just wanted to get through the year by the looks of it, but they still take in player feedback and they literally do better than any other studio in terms of um, taking feedback and actually changing the game from the feedback. Infinity Ward are by far the, f the worst for this. I wish they would take a leaf out of Stemper Chammer's book. Listen to the community a bit more because your community are the ones who are literally playing the game, not you. So fuck you. Listen to, the listen to me. 
change ghost change the perk packages in terms of stability i didn't really have many crashes throughout the year but there are a lot of like small texture bugs and like small annoying little bugs in this game you know it's nothing major it doesn't really get in the way of your playing like too much but it, it's sort of there it, it tells you that the game's unpolished you know a lot of things with the like execution animations and just stuff like that it just has a general unpolished feel to it and that kind of feel isn't good for a triple a title that's had millions and millions of pounds spent on it so it's just not a, a great thing i guess by now it's sort of all polished but eh. and possibly the main problem with this game sort of similar to cold war but actually it's more it's more worse in this game that's not even english um is the identity vanguard literally has no identity it never stayed grounded to the world war ii time period and i know it never it never tried to but that's the problem i have with it uh they were adding modern futuristic shit to this game they added godzilla and terminator there's no iconic characters or locations once again that are grounded to this time period it just all works out for a very generic experience, even more so than World War II, actually. Um, it's a big problem that COD's been having lately, especially the past two years, is the identity of the Call of Duty game. It doesn't stay true to the identity it tries to set to begin with, or in Vanguard's case, it doesn't even have an identity it's trying to stick to to begin with. It, it just has this sort of bland feeling to it. Like, you play a game even like more for 2019, yeah, it has some wacky skins in there, like a weed bush skin, but that's something that you would kind of expect from the timeline, and it, it's, you know, it's, it's a fun addition, sure, but it's nothing outrageous, I guess. Whereas when you've got Snoop Dogg with a laser gun from the future fighting Godzilla and a Terminator on, like, a mountain, it's just sort of, you know, you know what I mean? It doesn't feel like an authentic COD game. It feels like a mobile game. So uh, that's a big problem I have with it. And I think that's a very underlying issue that a lot of people don't really realize with COD games is that the identity is what makes the game boring, especially with this game. Now, in terms of the mastery for this game, um, I never got Atomic. Um, I tried going for it throughout the whole year of Vanguard, and I, I just... I could never stomach playing the game enough to actually go ahead and get this camo. And to be honest, I am pretty close. I've got pretty much all the weapons I need leveled up and everything. It's just going through and unlocking those camos. It's just long, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, I just don't enjoy the game enough. And in terms of anything else mastery... This is the only thing in the game that was actually worth getting. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter to me getting Atomic when the game sucks. The only other thing that I can think of that's a mastery camo on the top of my head is um, Dark Ether, which is just a joke of a camo to begin with but then you also have to stomach playing vanguard zombies and i think i'd rather dry hump a cactus than do that so yeah i ain't touching that shit the only other form of mastery i guess is the prestiges but i mean that's kind of a joke which actually leads us into our next point which is the progression and is the prestige system now my thoughts on the prestige system have actually changed so uh, last year with cold war when i did the review i said that i did like the prestige system but it had a few flaws um, the main things I said is going beyond level 200 in this season, there wasn't really any incentive to do that. Um, you know, there's, there's no point other than just saying I did it. And there's no special reward for getting 200 every season, so there isn't really any point in going through the motions and getting max prestige. I used to think, though, that this system was good because it helped with player retention. Even though there were rewards to getting 200 every season, even though they're not amazing rewards, there was an incentive to do it every season, which would make you come back and play it. But actually being with this system for almost two years now i've realized it's not a good system because not only are the rewards not very good but even if they were it doesn't have the same feeling as the original prestige because it feels a lot less permanent when your rank gets reset every season even though you have that prestige to show that you did it and the little stars underneath your name or whatever it doesn't have the same feeling as getting to max prestige level 500 or something and say black ops 3 which i did that has a more permanent feeling than prestige 27 in cold war and i'm like level 150 you know if i saw someone in like black ops 4 black ops 3 or you know with the previous cods i saw someone was level 500 i'd be like yo they're as mad they played this game loads i respect that but let's say i saw someone in Mortal Warfare 2 who's level like i don't know 500 let's say in season one the thing is i might see that person again in season two 
and they won't have that same rank because obviously their rank has been reset. So I'll see them in season one and be like, that's crazy. They played this game a lot. They're already level 500, how they've done that. But then I'll see them again in season two. Let's say I don't recognize the gamer tag and I'll see that their rank has been reset. I, I, you know, I, I won't have that sort of same record. I, I might recognize the level and be like, I've played against this guy before and he's sick. Instead, I'll just see someone's level 50 and I'll just be like, Meh, it's whatever. And you could say that's what the prestige is for. I mean, obviously the prestige is a thing that's carried across seasons. Um, but people don't look at your prestige. I mean, especially with Cold War as well. Not only were most of the prestige emblems generic and sort of the same, people use their own prestige emblems anyway. And I don't think anyone's looking into the, you know, sub-sub menu where it says your prestige or whatever. Nobody really cares that much. If they can just see your prestige master and you're using your custom prestige emblem or whatever, that's what they're going to recognize. If you're not, then you're not, you know, a high, very high level, I guess. But I just think this system is a lot less permanent than the original system, even though it does have that sort of permanent mark to it with the prestige and the star system um it's also not good as well because you can't retroactively earn prestiges these i don't think you can um if you didn't get every a max rank in every single season through cold water now you can't get to that max prestige at all so that time limit on it is very desensitizing i had max rank well, level 200 every season throughout Cold War and up until season 2 of Vanguard, I think. And season 3, I got to about 170 and I didn't get that max... Uh, I didn't get to level 200, so I didn't get the max prestige. So I stopped playing the game. I, I, I That was pretty much my tipping point, that was. That's why I think this progression system sucks. Hopefully, for Modern Warfare 2, they bring back the original prestige, but if not... If, unless they have a better plan, I just don't think it's it's go, it's going to be a bit of an L this year. League play, um, I'm going to be honest, I didn't even know it was in the game until like a couple minutes ago when I did some research on it. Um, but apparently it's in this game. I've never played it. I've never even heard of it. So maybe it's good. I don't know. And the final thing I want to talk about is the monetization. Now, we've talked about this three years in a row. Um, I talked about it in my, my Warfare review and my Cold War review. It's pretty much the exact same system as those two games apart from you've got like MVP screens, which I didn't talk about actually. They are stupid. Get rid of the MVP animation thing. It's just fucking cringe. But anyway, yeah, it was directly copied over from Warfare and Cold War, the monetization system. And although a lot of people think that this system sucks... I think this is the best system we've had in COD. Maybe apart from, like, the Black Ops 2 personalization packs, but they don't have any more... Like, they don't have as much longevity as a Battle Pass or Store Bundles, which I just think makes sense. Um, I think this is a good system for monetizing the game. The bundles are a bit overpriced, and until we get a better method just in the game community in general, we're stuck with Battle Passes for a long time. I mean, this is how... This is just how monetization of games goes. We went from DLC packs to sort of battle passes and free content, if that makes sense. So, yeah, unless we see a major shift in the gaming community again for the way games are monetized, we're stuck with battle passes. And in my opinion, I think it's probably the most fair system we've had in the history of gaming because realistically... All the other times before, it was monetizing actual content. At the moment, it's just monetizing cosmetics, and you can live without that. And yeah, Battle Pass is a bit of a time sink, to be honest, and the store bundles are very overpriced. But like I said, it's only cosmetics. You can play the game without them. It doesn't affect your gameplay at all. You're not missing out. So I just think it's pretty much the best system we've, we've had in a while, and the best system we're going to get. So that's everything I wanted to talk about with Call of Duty Vanguard. Now, overall... I'm going to give this game a 3 out of 10. I think this game is not the worst COD game we've ever had. I think that's extremely unfair to say that. And I think the main problem this game had was just player retention. I think at its, ba at its base, I think it's a decent game. If it had a Modern Warfare name on it, I bet a lot more people would have been playing this game, if I'm being honest. I think the fact it's called Vanguard and not Modern Warfare really hurt this game's reception. But that's really just talking about the multiplayer. Um, those three points, I would say, mainly just goes to the multiplayer. The campaign, it's unbearably average. It's unbearably mid. There's nothing special about it at all. And I, it's probably in the, like not even in the top 10 for COD campaigns. And the zombies is literally just, that deserves minus points, if I'm being honest. Like, that 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 should actually put this game in the minus. But the multiplayer, and I guess to a stretch of campaign, gives it this three. Um, I think the other areas of this game just let it down significantly. If those other two areas were good, this would be like a five or a six, to be honest. But anyway, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe if you're new around here. I do have 
have my goodbye Vanguard video coming up in the future, and that is going to be paired with a goodbye Cold War video. So if you're excited for that, make sure you subscribe, make sure you stick around. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.